Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Trap Lines and Inlines. I hope everybody is doing just dead like it's a beauty day here up in the bush. It's about minus 10, which is perfect winter. Still gorgeous, can't ask for better. Excited to be out working in the bush today. Now, so friends, I realize I have not done the very best job explaining to you why I'm moving my whole off-grid homestead to a new location. Leaving the deep bush uh, to move to a new new location is really a big change and for big reason here for me. And it's no good friends if uh, friends of the channel do, don't really understand what I'm doing because I haven't done a good job explaining that. I want the viewers of the channel to really be able to follow along and know why I'm doing things. and. To make the experience, uh, to make it more enjoyable to watch my show, to actually know exactly what's going on, I really want to keep you guys in, in the perfect loop and clear up confusion when we can. So I really want everyone on the same page, so I thought I'd make this video to explain and clear up a few things and really, really get the message across here by putting it in the same video. And then it's a reference point. If someone comes on my channel, they say, well, it used to be in the bush. Now he's not, here's a video why he's not. Well, it's it's simple. So uh, th that's why I'm doing this here today. Let's get right into it. Sorry, I, <laughs> if I don't write down what I gotta say, I forget everything I gotta say. So I have lived up in the bush here now for over three years. And I have been up here a lot longer than that, uh, trapping and, and, and such as well. So, uh, but especially the period living here has been the most important period of my life without question. Uh, but maybe more on that on, on a different video. So the big thing is my life is kind of moving on to bigger things here at the moment. You know, I'm following a really a big dream and, and really going for it. I'm in the process of building what I think will be the absolute ideal log home using uh, logs I've harvested myself and building something beautifully handcrafted for minimal cost. That's my big project, that's my big dream right now. And, and while I have you here friends, and while we can just clear everything up all at once and, and all be on the same page, I see the word cabin a lot in the comments when I'm talking about this project. You know, and it's it's confusion caused by me, so here I am to clear up my confusion. Because previously I had talked a lot about building a log cabin as my next project, but this is this is no log cabin project. I am going to build what I think is the ideal log home for me. The quintessential log home for me in a practical sense. Um, I am trying to build a home, uh, a forever home if, if you will. And I mean, it's not over the, uh, not something that's over the top extravagant in, in size, something that is very practical, very ideal, uh, ideal for everyday living but none the, nonetheless of uh, something of substantial size that you can never call a cabin, or at least I, I would never call a cabin, that's for sure. Like this really is a log home build and not a log cabin build. And, that, and that's definitely confusion caused by me of saying that over and over again. So I thought I would build a, you know, a pretty, pretty good sized cabin as my next project and then live out of that and then work on my forever home when due time come. But essentially I was holding myself back with this idea and I had to come to the conclusion, come to the realization that we should just fucking do this. You know, like we should make no compromises and we should do it right, do it once and go all out. So that in itself is a huge undertaking and it's going to be very challenging, but I am excited, friends, I can't wait. So friends, back to our, our original our original point, my my off-grid homestead, I, I, I love it here. I, I grew up here, um, so much of, I owe so much of everything to what I've learned here along the way and during the process, it's been incredibly important. So what makes it really, really, it's one of those terrible things that what makes it really, really great is also its biggest downfall. And that's being so, so far into the bush, um, so deep into the bush that access really is a problem. And I've talked about it enough in previous videos that will just keep it short. You know, in the spring, it's so boggy, you, you, you get stuck and you're on the quad and in the winter, the snow piles up, it's already piling up. I just really hard on my truck to get in here and uh, it piles up so bad then I have to skidoo into my camp. Like pretty well all last winter I was on the skidoo and that was really challenging, um, only having skidoo access to where I lived. 
But the really the bigger thing here on this particular deal is that w being so rocky and a lot of sharp tippy hills and sharp sharp turns and and matters of this sort, it would be very very difficult to get a flat deck trailer in here loaded with logs. So the truth is, if it was easy to access and I was able to get uh, the equipment I needed in here to build this thing, I would just bring the logs in here because I got the, the whole homestead just set up beautifully. I would just, just build, build the log structure here on stumps, take it down and move it. But that's not the case, nor will it ever be. It's just too challenging. Being so far, it's very difficult to access. Especially with that equipment, it's near impossible. Otherwise, I would just build the log shell on stumps, like I said and then take it down and move it to its its final location. What I wanted and needed is, is an efficient building spot for this big project. It's a huge project and it has to be efficient. Efficiency is everything. I needed a place that was, was much easier and less stressful to access without getting stuck. Somewhere I could actually work on this thing. The spot I found was all those things. It's a beautiful little spot and it's right where my logs are. So it's perfect. So the first thing I did and the most important thing I did was moved my workshop and my chicken coop there, which is my shed now with all my tools in it because that was the most important thing to get done first because I need to have all my tools right there on site ready to go and they're accessible if I need to fix something. Like once I get snowed out here in the winter, friends, I can't even access my tools. Like I couldn't even work on my truck without loading my skidoo up with tools to bring out. It's like, that's the efficiency we're talking about. That just, it just doesn't work. So that was the most important thing. So here's the next problem, you know, and we had confusion. It's regarding the, the cabin move. Geez, guys, this is really good. We're making this video and I think in getting this cleared up. Hope, hope it's helping. Um, there was a lot of confusion around that and as to why I wanted to move it. I want everything in the same place to have my tools and equipment there, but uh, to have everything is really ideal. To have dry clothes, to have meals, to have a quick cup of coffee when you want it, to fire up the generator in the morning and it can run everything instead of having to fire it up again when I get there. And to have all my video editing and all that jazz there too that's in my cabin, all in the same spot, all in the same building location, working all on the same project, it's so efficient and it's so incredibly focused on the task at hand. So I've kind of been humming and hawing about the cabin move. Uh, while I prioritized getting my logs out, I treated that as the number one priority. But as, so in the meantime, I've been living in my cabin here up north and it just hasn't been working well is the truth. It, it really hasn't. I've been doing a lot of driving back and forth. Um, I have to make sure I always have lunches organized and stuff instead of whipping in to just cook dinner quick. And I have to run my generator on the cold days so I can start my truck and then I gotta load it in the truck, drive all the way there, unload it, start it again for the tractor, wait hour and a half for that to go and then and then finally get started on the day. It's just not working well. If my cabin and everything and I was living in my same building location, I could fire up the generator, it could run my battery charger for my cab, solar power, my my truck and my tractor block heater all at once. <laughs> And most days I wouldn't even have to start my truck or my tractor or nothing. Um, and when I do, it would be simple. But right now it's, it's really difficult. It's really not working well. So I want to be camped out there, living out there for sure. And I'm still humming and hawing about what I'll do and what I'll be living in. But um, I'll figure it out for sure. Who knows, by the time you're watching this, I may have it figured out already. <laughs> Here's the deal. If I move my cabin out to my building site, like... Um, after I'm done with it there and no longer need it there, the best possible place I can think to put it is right here at bush camp. And you know, like that, that means moving it twice or leaving it there. And, and, and the whole moving thing is just very risky, uh, w with how this is constructed. So I'm approaching it, uh, thoughtfully and cautiously and, and definitely not rushing it. We're still humming and hawing about it. So friends, I'm moving my homestead, not because I'm done with bush life, but because I want to use the buildings I have built and the infrastructure I have built and already put the money into and have it set up perfectly to live in and to work out of, to use to build my log home project uh, for the next chapter of my life. I've already 
built all these things and I would love to be able to utilize them further if I can. Um, it would really, really be ideal. You know, I know that I'll be, I'll be back in the bush before long. I know that for sure. But I also know that if, if I'm, I got a project of that caliber and all my stuff set up out there, there's no reason for me to have this cabin here. Like a lot of people were saying, you know, so I really, some people said, well, it'd be a nice outpost or a place to say, I'm never going to be here is the truth. If I'm so focused on what I'm doing. Um, unless I have work to do up here at bush camp, I know that I'm going to be so focused on my project, um, that I will really never be up here. And, uh, so I would love to utilize it, but I'm exploring other options as well as something to live out of because I understand how risky this cabin move will be, how much time it'll take, the possibility of collapsing it and etc. But that's really the big thing. That's really the closing point. I'm not done with bush life, but I'm moving on to a next chapter in my life that involves me being more efficient. And I would love to efficiently use all the infrastructure I've already put a ton of money into uh, to be able to build and work out of and live out of while I build that next uh, project because this is all set up to have no expenses. And then taking on something that has so many expenses has so many expenses like that log home project, you know, to keep it simple, to keep costs minimal, that's going to be ideal. And I can essentially be living and, and all my, no, no power costs, no nothing. So I hope we cleared everything up here, friends. But friends, before I let you go, I've been working on something uh, I, I'm just as happy and excited to share about with you as, as my videos. Like, um, Ever since I've had this YouTube channel, I wanted to set up a brand. I wanted a logo that was meaningful and deadly. And I wanted to be able to share that with friends. And I've always taken a lot of pride in that logo, that brand, that name of the channel and my videos and, and everything. I have now my own equipment and I'm making my own very own traplines and inlines merchandise. And I am really excited about it. And I am really excited to share it with you, friends. I really hope you guys like it. I really do. Friends, my goal, my mission here with my merchandise is to be able to provide you with high quality clothing and, a, and apparel without charging you a ton of money. I want to be able to share with you um, trap lines and inlines branded apparel, be able to share my brand and for you to be able to enjoy it if you enjoy the show without charging a shitload for sh t-shirts and sweaters. I want my stuff to cost the same amount as your run of the mill generic shit you would otherwise buy at the store. That's always been my mission with this. Like I want it to be an option, not an exclusive option that you have to pay for the trap lines and inlines brand or none of that shit. I want it to be, you know, the same price you could buy a basic sweater, but this is a high quality sweater that I hope you're happy to wear. I hope you're happy to share, share the brand that, 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 that we, that I enjoy sharing with you. You know what I mean, guys? See, there's just no way I can charge friends a whole bunch who, who, who are, who are so deadly to me and, 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 and follow along my show so good. I just want to be able to share that with you. Uh, I want to be able to wear my own stuff. I want to share it with you too. And I want to be able to do it uh, at, at low price tags. Eh? I, I want to be a, it to be an option that's not expensive. So I've been working night and day to get this all set up, um, to make it, to learn how to make it. And now I've been working about how I'm going to get it to you. Because here's another, uh, another big important thing. We have really bad, really bad shipping circumstances here in Canada. It's really expensive. It's really slow. And there's no way I'm selling you something that has expensive and slow shipping. I, so I have a small number of sweaters that I've made and I've been get it working at getting out and have been g dealing with all the logistics of this. Now, the problem is I, I've got it so I have really fast, really cheap shipping uh, that I can share with you friends in Canada. I'm still working really hard to get it so that I can have fast and cheap shipping to the United States because otherwise it's going to be a couple weeks, it's going to be tied up at the border and it's going to be too damn expensive and I don't want that. So I've got my prices good. I, I'm still working on getting my shipping good. So I got some sweaters friends. I'm I'm going to be able to offer to Canada and I'll share the link here in the description or on the video about where you can find 
uh, the sweaters, but they're only going to be available to Canada. Now, I'm really sorry about that, friends. I am working hard, I promise, to get them available to, you the, to the United States with fast and cheap shipping. Now, so I have these sweaters are just going to be available to Canada. There's not very many. Uh, please bear with me, friends. Then I'm hoping to have a big order ready before Christmas that's going to be available to the United States and Canada. And then I am going to still be working on the international shipping thing is going to be another difficult issue. And uh, I'm really trying to figure it all out. And uh, uh, just bear with me, friends. Trying my hardest uh, to get it all out. I know there was a lot of a lot of interest and excitement when I had previously talked about it and showed you me making this stuff. I am so excited about it. It makes me so excited for all this. <laughs> So th as always, friends, it's a pleasure. I hope everyone is doing just great. Uh, we got a lot on the go here. We're very busy, and hopefully my channel stays busy with a lot of content because I've really been trying to grind it out and get a lot of videos out here to you, friends, as we work on these projects. So thanks, guys.